Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Hiring New in 2022 webinar series. We're going to let everyone join the room and we're going to get started with our webinar today. All right, perfect. So it looks like our webinar numbers are going up with our participants. So welcome everyone who's joining us today. We're so happy to have you. Um, this is the Hiring New in 2022 webinar series. My name is Heather Campbell and I'm a recruiter with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, I'm passionate about helping job seekers connect with their dream careers at CMS. And our goal is to increase your awareness of CMS programs that are impacting our nation in hopes that you apply for CMS positions on usajobs.gov. So this webinar is gonna be different from our previous webinars. Um, in the past, past, you've seen us do webinars where we're demystifying the federal hiring process, or we're talking about advancing health equity and what we're doing about it in our agency. Today, we will be spotlighting some of our most sought after programs within our agency. And we're bringing you today hiring managers, subject matter experts, and Pathways Program participants from inside of our agency to give you a firsthand experience on what it's like to work within our agency. So just to name a few today, our highly sought after programs that you're gonna be hearing firsthand experiences from our Office of Minority Health, OMH, also known as OMH, Office of Minority Health, our Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, also known as CMMI, and our Centers for Medicare and CHIP Services, also known as CMCS. So we have seven dynamic speakers and we don't want to delay. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into our CMS overview. So a little bit about the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys so you can see my slides. A little bit about CMS. So we write health our agency, and we are the largest purchaser of healthcare in the world. And we're responsible for one of our nation's most critical functions. Programs like Medicare, Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, the Federal Health Exchanges, just to name a few, have an impact on over 145 Americans in the United States including citizens, families, people with limited incomes, and individuals with disabilities. And our goal at CMS truly is, um, our mission is to serve the, the public as a trusted partner and steward, steward in dedicating um, and, and advancing health equity. Our state-of-the-art headquarters is located in Woodlawn, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore, Maryland. But I do want to note that you will see more remote positions coming from CMS in the future as we are in a telework uh, position. So as far as our locations, CMS maintains offices um, here in the Washington DC area, Bethesda, and also in our 10 regional offices, including Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Kansas City, Denver, San Francisco, Seattle, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. One of the things you're going to hear today from our centers and our offices is that CMS hires all different backgrounds. So there is literally a position for you at CMS. Um, we hire individuals with the healthcare background. Um, our number one hired position is the health insurance specialist, followed by the social science research analyst and the management analyst. But we also hire in areas such as media and communication, so public affairs specialist. We have a health communication specialist. A pathways position coming up in the near future. We also hire in the business finance and program support area, as well as the technology, mathematics, and science area. So there truly is a position for you at CMS, whether you're looking to work on our programmatic side of the house, of our agency, or the operational side that truly just serves operationally the programs. So that's a little bit about CMS and we're gonna jump right into our speakers. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight about what we do at CMS, what our, our function, our mission is, 
And now we're gonna go right into um, our CMS Career Spotlight. We're gonna start off with our Office of Minority Health. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna jump right into these seven speakers. We have from the Office of Minority Health, Megan Cowell. Um, so you can go ahead and take the floor, Megan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Heather, uh, for inviting Alex and I to join um, the webinar today. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Cole. I am the director for the data and policy analytics group within the CMS Office of Minority Health. Um, as Heather implied to, you know, we are the only office within the CMS Office of Minority Health out of the eight offices of minority health across the Department of Health and Human Services. As a highlight, our mission is um, to lead the advancement and integrations of health equity in the development, evaluations, and implementations of CMS policies, programs, and partnerships. Our visions are all those served by CMS have achieved their highest level of health and well being, and we have eliminated disparities in healthcare quality and access. We are one of the smaller um, offices within, the, within CMS. Um, we have two groups within CMS, and our goal is to serve as the principal advisor to the agency on the needs of minority populations, including individuals with racial and ethnic minorities, um, individuals with disabilities, members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community, individuals with limited English proficiencies, individuals living in rural areas, and persons otherwise adversely affected by persistent poverty and inequality. Um, we provide subject matter expertise to CMS on minority health and health disparities and gives recommendation on how to address um, those issues. We also serve as a liaison between CMS and other offices of minority health within the department and other government agencies. So as I mentioned, um, there are two groups within CMS Office of Minority Health. One, the Program Alignment and Partner Engagement Group, we call PayPay for short, which is being uh, led by my colleague, Alex Brydens, who will be speaking shortly. And the other group is my group, the Data and Policy Analytics Group. So at a high level, PayPeg participates in the development of CMS policies, regulations, plans, and programs, coordinates minority health initiatives within CMS, and engages key stakeholders in a variety of health equity conversations. Uh, while my group, um, as you can see from the title itself, focus on everything and anything that has to do with health equity data. Uh, we conduct research data collections and analysis to identify targets to reduce health disparities, eliminate barriers and generate solutions for the minority populations. We also mon monitor environmental factors and trends that may impact minority health and gather and share knowledge on the data aspects to see how we can improve the quality of care, access to care, um, in any other related health disparities issues um, revolving around our underserved community. My group specifically uh, comprise of uh, staff who are health statisticians, social science research analysts, IT specialists focusing on data, uh, program manager, and public health advisor. Um, and specifically when it comes to recruitment, it's a little bit difficult for us when it comes to hiring individuals, mainly because our focus is so narrow. Um, having to be able to find somebody with understanding of program, uh, CMS programs um, is it's a challenge in itself. And then further that, looking into folks who have experience doing data, data analysis around CMS programs data is another challenge. And then the third challenge is knowing, understanding health equity. So when you combine all those three together, my pool of recruitment really, really shrink. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't find individuals. We do. So my recommendations for individuals who are applying to CMS, you know, it is important that you pull out those specific keywords that highlight your experience, um, your expertise, your knowledge, as well as make sure to read the job description that is included in the posting or um, areas identified as duties uh, for the job in making sure that those um, phrases or keywords are reflected um, within, the, with your, within your resume to make sure that it, it, all that information is captured uh, specifically. Um, but I think CMS is a great place to work. Well, I don't think it is a great place to work. And uh, we have a very diverse group of staff. 
Myself personally, um, as background, I came to CMS right out of graduate school. I really had no idea what I wanted to do, um, but I was offered an internship through the department. Um, and so that internship allowed me to uh, work specifically at a, for a certain time frame um, at certain agency within the department, but my home office at the time was CMS. Um, and I gained a lot of experience um, through that rotations and I continued to stay with CMS. I had no knowledge um, you know, of CMS programs as, outside of the fact of the Medicare because my grandfather was on Medicare um, and Medicaid at the time. So that was my knowledge of how the agency works and how it uh, revolves around um, individuals who are enrolled within the two programs. But from a career perspective, as I said, I came right out of grad school um, no, no really work experience whatsoever and everything I have learned up to this point um, has been provided by CMS and the many wonderful colleagues that I've worked with over the years. I have been with CMS for almost 18 years now. Um, so as you can see, I, I really stick around and, and thoroughly enjoy um, my experience here at CMS and being the latest in the Office of Minority Health. Um, and so I think it's, it's definitely a good opportunity, you know, if you're able to um, identify a posting that you're interested in and always, always apply. You never know what happens, so don't hesitate just because you may not have the experience that you may not qualify, but I, I would go ahead and just apply. But definitely, as I said, um, focus on those keywords, make sure they're reflected in your resume, review the job description. Um, and our Office of Minority Health is always hiring um, so definitely uh, check usajob.gov um, to see what is the latest. So Alex, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Megan. Um, and so I, my name is Alexandra Bryden. Uh, I go by Alex, my pronouns are she, her. Um, and I am the other group director um, in the CMS Office of Minority Health. So Megan referenced the her group, the Data Policy and Analytics Group. My group is the Program Alignment and Partner Engagement Group, so that kind of other half. And um, the shorthand of what our group does is, and, and why I joined CMS in the first place is that we work across all of the programs and policies, Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, the marketplace, all the private, you know, Medicare, A, B, C, D, um, and uh, and operations, and we think through how our programs can really reflect the voices um, and the needs of all of the individuals we serve, particularly those populations that Megan listed off. So we're always thinking about how is the program structured currently? What are we proposing? What are we thinking about in terms of um, moving the program forward? And what might the different impact be of that program or policy depending on the population you're in? Whether you're in a rural community, do you get a different experience from the program? If you do, then our office is the one that thinks about that um, and helps the other program components think about that and how um, we can make sure that no matter where somebody lives, no matter what social risk factors they might have, what might be going on in their lives uh, or in their home experiences, um, that uh, might shape the way they could access a service or the way that uh, a service feels when they receive it, the way that a provider in a particular community might be able to interact with the Medicare program or the Medicaid program. Is that all equitable? Um, so that's kind of the, the very sort of short, shorthand version of what, what we do. We're everywhere that we, um, we need to be. So we're everywhere across the agency. So Megan kind of mentioned, you know, it, it's it's a tough um, it's a tough set of skills to come equipped with to know all the programs all the policies all the equity implications so a lot of what both Megan and I do as managers is um, folks will come in with some areas of expertise and some areas where they are program experts or policy experts and then we help to build that knowledge so that um, that if somebody comes in with Medicare Advantage knowledge, for example, um, we can help that person think about what might be relevant for Medicaid, Medicaid managed care, maybe the marketplace, so that that knowledge is now translatable across programs, um, which opens up just a whole new world of opportunities for, um, I hope, 
for anyone who's working in our team to be able to take the experience they have and really grow and think about it from all these different lenses and angles um, on different populations. Because it also may be the case that someone comes in with experience in a grad program, for example, um, or in a past career working with a particular population. Um, but, you know, we think about the intersectionality of populations. So the community of individuals with disabilities who may also be limited English proficient. And what does that mean? How do we make sure that CMS's programs are thinking about things through that lens of a person with these multiple identities that really shapes how they're going to interact with the healthcare system um, and what they might need from a provider or, or an insurance plan or benefit. Um, so in our group, we do a few things. You can see on our website, which is cms.go.cms.gov slash OMH. Um, there are a number of the things that Megan talked about related to data, and there's a, a bunch of work that I'll talk about a little bit, um, so really high level. Um, which is related to our policies and programs. A lot of what our office does is to develop things that are public facing. So Megan talked a bit about data. There's some really cool interactive data tools. Um, there are data snapshots. We help the public connect to CMS data um, to help see the different populations that we serve in a more granular way. We also help to develop resources for providers or for individuals who are consumers of our programs um, to help them understand their coverage better or to help providers you know, know what services they might be able to access that are culturally tailored or linguistically tailored or how they could tailor services to meet the needs of a specific population that they serve. Um, and then we also have a few things on our website that relate to the overarching strategy. CMS has released a pillar, um, our strategic pillars as an agency of what we're going to prioritize in the next several years. We have also recently released the CMS framework for health equity that came out of our office. And it's the way that CMS is operationalizing health equity over the next 10 years. So it has a set of priorities um, that we help work across the agency to sort of make these approaches standardized. Um, we also work across the agency to promote standardized language so that all of our programs are communicating using the same terms with the public um, and internally. Um, but then this dovetails into some of the other work that we do, which is a ton of stakeholder engagement and outreach. So all the positions that Heather noted um, that CMS employs CMS Office of Minority Health, notwithstanding that we are quite small, we also employ pretty much every single one of those types of um, positions because we do a lot of communication with partners outside of the agency to make sure that we are really hearing the needs of what the communities are asking for, what the unique barriers are, really thinking about how to be responsive to the whole administration's charge to identify any barriers that populations are experiencing and eliminate them so that we're really advancing health equity. Um, there are a couple of other things you will see on our website. Um, one is the Minority Research Grant Program. So that's another way that we engage and support eliminating and reducing disparities, which is to run a grant program that's focused specifically on minority serving institutions um, and promoting research around individuals in underserved communities and interventions that CMS supports through our programs. Um, so Medicare reimbursed services, for example, that might be tailored uniquely to a specific population. Um, so, and then testing that, having scientific validity to know that, okay, this intervention really does work. Uh, it saves money or it improves quality, improves access or outcomes for a specific population. And that can be something that is then a best practice or a promising practice that we can promote. Um, those are a lot of the big buckets of work that we do in our office. A little bit about me and how I ended up here, just so that it's a little relatable and folks can see themselves in this journey. I am now a hiring manager. Um, I started in the CMS Office of Minority Health 10 years ago. Before that, I had worked for federally qualified health centers. So sort of a different path to Megan, I actually knew exactly why I wanted to be at CMS. I had written provisions of the Affordable Care Act when I was working in Congress, and I knew that it was really important for me to implement them. Um, so I came with this intention um, and hope that the work that 
I helped to move through to the point of legislation was something I could really help implement with the intent that um, that it was met when it was written. And I have been here 10 years, so it was fulfilling. It is fulfilling. Um, we're still implementing uh, and we implement more all the time. It's an incredibly dynamic place to work, both in our office, but also in the agency writ large. Um, it's also, I will offer the perspective of, you know, being in a small office, it can sometimes feel hard to get into that tiny office. It might be easier to get hired and, and it might be a rich experience to be hired into a big center um, where you're getting then program experience. And then I, I have seen um, a tremendous number of details come through, people on rotation. CMS is incredibly, incredibly proactive about giving people the chance to interact across centers, across programs, and get really different experiences. So um, it's a really dynamic agency to come to in that you can come in kind of one door. And once you're here in this big campus, virtual campus, um, you have a, a tremendous number of opportunities to get involved in different programs, to move from center to center and have different work experiences and really broaden your career to, um, to be very expansive. So I have loved being in the CMS Office of Minority Health, but part of that is because I have the joy of working across all of the centers and programs. Um, it really is an agency that over the time I have been here, I have seen us break down so many silos so that we're collaborating, whether that's between data teams and policy teams, thinking about impact of our policies and how we evaluate that impact goes right back to data um, and our programs and operations and our management support and management analysts who honestly are the backbone of much of what our agency does so it really is an agency that celebrates like the diverse experiences people come with the diverse skill sets um, and really can rely on anyone's skills whether they're an IT specialist someone in business operations or someone like me who's just a really big policy nerd. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my set of experiences. I don't know how we're doing, Heather, on time, but are we good? Yeah, we're doing great. Um, I, I really wanted to just step in really quickly and say, wow, what an experience we've had just with these two guest speakers, Megan and Alexandra. Thank you. Megan, you shared with us your 18 year as a hiring manager, your 18 year experience and knowledge around um, CMS programs has led you into this role. Um, I really appreciate you sharing about how you progress throughout the agency. Um, and also thank you, Megan, for the, for the resume writing tips for um, job seekers. And Alexandra, thank you so much for, again, another group director, SME perspective on what it's like to work in the Office of Minority Health. Um, so thank you all for joining us today and representing the voices of those that benefit fit from CMS programs in the Office of Minority Health. Next up on the list, we actually have, uh, we're switching gears to another center within the agency, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. And we have another SME and director, group director, hiring manager, division director and hiring manager, Claire Schreiber, um, working in the division uh, of patient care model. So Claire, you may take the floor. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. Um, so, I am going to talk just a little bit about um, CMMI overall, the center that's our shorthand for the Innovation Center in CMS. And then I'll, I'll give some details about kind of the work that I've done there and, and my journey at CMS. Um, so CMMI was created by the Affordable Care Act. Um, our mission is to improve the quality of healthcare and reduce spending for Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries. Um, we have a pretty broad legal authority that was enshrined in the Affordable Care Act, and uh, we use that to test ways to improve the healthcare system. So um, a, a way that I kind of describe it to folks who may not be so familiar with our work is that essentially we test a whole bunch of different pilot projects or demonstration projects. We call them models, and um, we test them and have a, a group that does pretty rigorous evaluation of them. And the idea is to find out, you know, if there are certain um, changes in payment or clinical changes or other other types of ways that we can really affect the healthcare system and identify those things that, that work, that improve quality for beneficiaries and um, reduce spending. 
or that, um, you know, leave spending the same, but improve quality. There's all kinds of sort of different, different ways um, that, that we can make, make a difference that are talked about in our legislation. So the center itself has um, seven groups that design and test these different models. Um, we have several different groups that actually run the models. So my group, the patient care models group, I'm a division director within that group. So we have about four divisions. Um, we are one of the groups that designs and implements models. There's a couple of groups that do kind of cross cutting activities as well. So things like evaluation, as I mentioned before, um, budgets, uh, legal expertise, and some examples of the types of projects we do are accountable care organizations or ACOs, primary care models, so models that really focus on kind of how to improve primary care and what we can do from the Medicare Medicaid side of that. Um, bundled payment models, that would be, that's the group that I'm in. We do all of the bundled payment models and um, specialist focused models as well as models that partner with states on Medicaid issues and also population health. Um, so it's a variety of different types of work. We'll say the work is very varied. I've been at CMS now since January of 2014, and I've worked on things, I've been in the same group that entire time, and I've worked on things as varied as, um, you know, projects about physician payment to hospitals, to home health, to skilled nursing facilities, um, and many other things as well. So one of the great things about CMMI um, is that, you know, we have to, we'll, we'll sometimes say, we have to know a little about a lot of different areas across the agency. And part of that too, is we have to form the relationships um, with folks who are really experts on different policy areas because our projects touch so many different areas. So uh, some examples of that are our colleagues in, um, the Centers for Clinical Standards and Quality. We work with them very closely on quality measures. We work with our partners in um, Office of Minority Health on a lot of work around equity that's really ramping up within the center and looking at health disparities and you know how can we build things into our models to address that. Also work with our partners in um, the Centers for Medicaid and CHIP services on models that involve Medicaid. So we really have a lot of, um, a lot of different pieces to the projects and, and it's a great opportunity to learn a lot of different um, a lot about a lot of different areas of healthcare. So as I mentioned, I've been at CMS since January 2014. I've been in the same group. Um, I think one of the earlier speakers had mentioned that the that the agency really has a lot of opportunities for people to work across the agency and and learn about different areas. So I, I have had one of those opportunities. I did um, a rotation actually in a, in a different agency in the Office of Management and Budget a number of years ago. So that certainly, I would say that's absolutely true. People often will do um, what we call a detail, which is um, generally a rotation of several months to learn about other areas. And that happens pretty frequently. And then, you know, they'll come back and have gotten really on the ground experience in a different policy area. So that's very, I think, both helpful for their sort of home office and also helpful for them in, in terms of uh, professional growth and development. Um, so I started out um, as a project analyst, then became a team lead. And then since 2018, I've been a division director. So I manage a team of about um, 10 or so folks working on different projects. Um, in terms of how I came to CMS, I, uh, I have a background in public health um, and came and, and was interested in working at the Innovation Center, knew that was kind of my goal when I was in graduate school. And uh, I actually found a job through a USA Jobs posting. So um, it, it was a little bit of a process. It took a little while, but, um, but that is how I, how I ended up at CMS. Um, so I had sort of identified, I will say I had sort of identified the area where I wanted to be within the agency and then um, was able to uh, come in through a regular posting. I would say a lot of people in, in CMMI um, have a lot of different types of backgrounds in terms of their experiences. So a lot of folks with public health experience, um, policy experience, nursing, uh, research, management, you know, a lot, 
just a really, really wide variety of types of experiences and, and skills that we're often looking for. So, you know, we have folks who spend a lot of time on budgets and others who are spending most of their time um, on quality measures or um, doing evaluations of different models. So it's really quite varied. I will say um, it keeps the work interesting. <laughs> and in terms of kind of day to day, you know, I think this is probably true across most of the agency. We spend a lot of time kind of writing policy papers, doing slides, you know, working through different issues or, um, you know, interpreting data that comes to us from other teams or maybe is done in-house on our team. So it's very, it's, it's quite varied. And we'll say the types of skills that we're looking for are, you know, we're always looking for folks with analytical skills, but more so than anything, sort of just interest in learning about new different areas because the work is constantly changing. So I'll stop there. And I know we have someone else from CMMI speaking, but I will turn it over to Alexa. Yes. Heather, it's okay. I'll go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Gallagher. I'm a health insurance specialist and a presidential management fellow for the Division of Advanced Primary Care within the CMS Innovation Center. Uh, first, I'll go into a little bit about my background, and then I'll talk about my position at CMMI. My background, I am a registered nurse, and I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I also have a doctor of nursing practice degree. Um, previously, before I came to the federal government, a lot of my nursing experience was in critical care. And while I was working with my seriously ill patients, I really came to appreciate kind of the importance of primary health care and also disease prevention. So at that point, I decided that I wanted to go back to grad school and I wanted to become a family nurse practitioner and I wanted to work in primary care to work on those things. But while I was in completing my graduate education, I kind of realized that while I did enjoy working in primary care and working on disease prevention, I actually wanted to be able to help more people at once and really use my clinical experience to kind of shape how healthcare was delivered. And realizing that, I decided to shift my focus in graduate school to focus more on population health and also policy. And when it came time to graduate then, you know, I had to find a job. So I sort of zeroed in on the federal government because I knew here I would have the opportunity to work on policies and programs that could truly make a difference in every American's life. And I actually learned about the Presidential Management Fellowship Program through a newsletter with, um, at my university. And this is a program for professionals within two years of graduating with their graduate degrees. And so I applied to that program and I was fortunate enough to be accepted. Um, and I decided to join CMS through the Presidential Management Fellowship Program. Um, I really felt like CMS was a center that had a really interesting mix of people with different educational and professional backgrounds. And I felt like my clinical experience as a nurse would fit well in with the work that we do here. And so now I'll get a little bit more into my work at CMMI. Um, so as Claire noted before, the CMS Innovation Center is a center within CMS that works to innovate in the pursuit of affordable and better healthcare for all Americans. And we're hoping to create a healthcare system that achieves equitable outcomes through high quality, affordable, and person-centered care. I work for the Division of Advanced Primary Care within the Seamless Care Models Group, so I really get the opportunity to use my previous primary care experience in my everyday work. Um, the Seamless Care Models Group identifies and develops innovations in care that enables healthcare professionals in different settings to work together to care for their patients. And the innovations are aimed at achieving progress in delivering better care, better health, and also lowering costs. Now, my division focuses on models that concentrate on transforming primary care um, using value-based payment. The main model that we're working on right now is called Primary Care First. And this is a national model that has around 3,000 primary care practices in it. One thing that I really enjoy about working on a model within the Innovation Center is that our team runs the entire model, um, meaning that a lot of our work streams on the model actually intersect. 
And because of that, we often work on multiple aspects of the model. So, for example, I work on care delivery requirements. I am the technical assistance lead. I'm the data aggregation lead. And I also liaise with our learning team. And so by doing that, I'm able to gain experience um, and have a hand in multiple aspects of our model, which I really enjoy and I find really exciting and rewarding. Um, and because I work on multiple aspects of the model, um, my day can vary from you know, writing new model policies and procedures to giving briefs about model progress um, and to also working with other team members to address any complex situations that might arise. We have to place a lot of emphasis on teamwork and team discussion. And I really enjoy that because it translates really similarly to my work as a registered nurse. And so since I'm a presidential management fellow, um, I also have to complete my fellowship requirements. Some of these include attending meetings with other pathways participants at CMS um, and also completing trainings, which help me develop my skills that benefit my work at CMMI, but also that help me to foster my professional growth and skills that I'm hoping to um, gain for myself. Um, I've been at CMI for about 10 months now. I've really enjoyed my time here and I feel like I'm able to use my clinical experience to inform my work. And I also really feel like we're at the forefront of healthcare innovation and we're really working towards improving healthcare for all Americans. Um, thanks for giving me the time to speak today and I look forward to any questions anyone has. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexa and Rachel. We really appreciate you joining us um, from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. We really had a nice layering in of the management experience as well as the pathways experience. And um, Alexa, it was really great to hear how you've been able to parlay your nursing background um, into working on the models and working in the primary care area within CMMI. So thank you both for joining us from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. Next up, we have um, our next three speakers from the Centers for Medicare and Children's Health Insurance Programs. Um, and so we're just gonna transition. We're actually transitioning into another center. We went from CMMI to CMCS. And our first speaker up is Heather Rawls. Um, she's gonna talk to you a little bit about how CMCS is leveraging the Pathways Program um, within their center. Thank you for joining us, Heather. Thank you for having me. So good morning, everyone or good afternoon. My name is Heather Ross. I'm the acting deputy director of the State Demonstration Group. The State Demonstration Group is a part of CMCS, as Heather mentioned. Um, so as many of you talked about before me, um, many people have come through different programs, but I actually came in to the federal government directly through CMS uh, through a job posting on USA.gov. So prior to being a CMS, I worked over 15 years in nonprofit agencies, local and state government agencies, and working directly with the public um, on public health initiatives. Um, so for me, I was working for my early career, really implementing many of the policies that are developed through CMCS. So even though I was loving working with the community, I wanted to start work on developing the policies that were trickling down to the community. So for me, I applied and I have been working with the state demonstration group for all the seven years that I've been with the federal government. So just to give you um, a sense of my, in my um, promotion, I started off as a project officer, became a technical director, and now I'm currently the acting deputy director of the Division of Eligibility and Coverage Demonstrations. And just to give you a brief overview of the State Demonstration Group or SDG that I might revert back through during this discussion, uh, the State Demonstration Group encompasses three divisions. We're the Division of Demonstration Monitoring and Evaluation, Division of System Reform Demonstrations, and the division that I currently work in, which is the Division of Eligibility and Coverage. And just to give you an understanding of what State Demonstration Group is, in the Social Security Act, there's, if there is authority under Section 1115 that gives the Secretary of Health and Human Services authority to approve experimental pilot and demonstration projects. 
that promote the objectives of Medicaid and children's health insurance programs, also known as CHIP programs. Under this authority, the secretary may waive certain provisions of the Medicaid law, as well as allow states to receive expenditure authority to give states additional flexibility to design and improve these programs. So what do we do? The state demonstration group performs a case-by-case -case review of each proposal to determine whether its stated objectives align with those of Medicaid. We also consider whether proposed waiver or expenditure authorities are appropriate and consistent with federal policies. Uh, demonstrations must also be budget neutral to the federal government, which means that they, the project has to have expenditures that will not be more than the federal spending without the demonstration. Generally, 1115 demonstrations are approved for initially five years and can be extended for up to an additional three or five years, depending on the population served. The state demonstration group works in alignment with CMS's mission. And CMS's mission is, serve, mission is to serve the public as a trusted partner and steward dedicated to advancing health equity, expanding coverage, and improving our health outcomes. In SDG, we are always focused on initiatives that will advance health equity, expand coverage to beneficiaries, and improve those health outcomes. And we work with states to make sure that they're enhancing these specific initiatives and not hindering coverage for beneficiaries. Uh, this year, the state demonstration group is focusing on working with other groups and divisions within CMS to develop policies that will allow states to operate programs that focus on social determinants of health, tribal traditional health programs, and justice involved individuals. We're currently working with the Division of Tribal Affairs and the Indian Health Services, which is outside of CMS on the tribal healing policy development. We are working with the Division of Benefits and Coverage on justice involved initiatives. And we're also working across CMS uh, with regards to the initiative focusing on social determinants of health. Sorry about that. <laughs> pathways. So I am also here to talk to you about the Pathways program. So as a hiring manager, um, I really like to give some feedback and our experience with the Pathways program. In the past three years, our division, Division of Eligibility and Coverage, have been very fortunate to have three to four Pathway interns and this year, our Division of Demonstrations Monitoring and Evaluation has also accepted a pathway intern. Working with SDG, uh, we have been able to allow pathway interns to bring their talents and skills to our group and to assist in the work that they're doing, as well as enhance the skills and development of the intern. Uh, we love the fresh energy that participants bring to us and all of our PATH interns have been integrated very seamlessly in our team. We've really loved their work and they participate in, in all of our work and activities at a real high level. Uh, we also find that our pathway interns have been highly motivated and um, eager to jump into projects quickly. And it, it does make the experience to manage them a lot easier. Uh, in the last two years, we've had the opportunity to allow our interns to work longer than their original allocated time. Uh, we worked with our interns around their school schedules, as well as to have them continue their internship opportunity while they are um, graduating school. Um, the other thing is that we also had the opportunity to bring our pathway interns on as permanent employees. Uh, one of our pathway interns who was hired as a project officer is still with us in our division um, after five years. And she recently was promoted to an acting technical director position. Um, we've also hired two additional pathway interns in the past few years as project officers within our division. And, um, you know, basically it was because we had two vacancies and we worked well, they worked so well with us, we had asked them to make sure they apply for these positions. Um, some pathway interns have taken their skills and information they obtained and have accepted other positions within our departments and within other departments within CMCS, CMS, and other federal agencies. 
And just recently, we've had the opportunity to meet and interview several Pathway interns to work with us this summer. Um, as a hiring manager, we really look for people who stand out on paper and then on interviews. Just to give you a heads up, the process for um, what, what we deal with is that it begins with us with a package of intern resumes. And we usually receive anywhere between 20 to 40 resumes. And we are looking at students that have participated working with people on a community level. Some people don't necessarily have to have that direct Medicaid experience or policy development experience. I know they talked about earlier that be open, apply for positions that you think that you may not get because you may get them. We're always looking for pathway interns and looking for people who worked in the community or worked with agencies, groups, programs that work with hospitals, clinics, schools, universities, health departments, Again, working with community members. We like to see interns that have diverse background experience. And this includes employment, volunteer, or even research with a university or school. Um, this year, we've seen many pathway interns with experience working with communities with testing, vaccination, and prevention education regarding the COVID pandemic. And just to give you a quick summarization of some top internship interviewing tips, uh, be prepared. We like it when Pathway interns do some research on our program, SDG, and all this information can be found online. We like you to emphasize your skills and accomplishments. SDG is at time fast paced. And what we do between approving demonstrations, developing policies, and presenting the information to our office of director, our office center and director. We're always looking for people who have strong organizational skills, time management skills, critical thinking skills, um, high adaptability, and the, the ability to collaborate. And we like interns to take initiative to step in and help with possible projects that they do come up with. So lastly, we ask you to also tell us what you would like to gain from the internship. We really appreciate it when Pathway interns tell us what they hope to gain and how this will fit into their future endeavors. Because many interns take their experiences with us to decide if they wanna to continue to go into a policy development or maybe leave the federal policy development sector and go into public health community grassroots effort, but they really get an understanding of what it takes to develop policy and to work with states and have a strong communication skill. So with us, that's really where we've done a lot of that work within SDG. So I think I'm gonna take it back to Heather. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> it was, um, it's great um, to hear your experience in CMCF. And really what I really gleaned from your, your talk was that you all are really hiring a lot of pathway students. A lot of interns are actually finding full-time positions in CMCS. And so you're really investing um, in your pathway students. Um, so thank you so much for sharing those great uh, hiring tips from a hiring manager's perspective. And thank you for all your work that you've done um, with pathways. So we have two more speakers joining us um, to finalize and round out our webinar for today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce them and you all can just kind of roll into um, your, your session. So from CMCS, next up we have Jose Alicorn on the line from CMCS. And then we have finalizing our webinar today, Meg Berry. So you all may take the floor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Heather. Um, hey everyone, my name is Jose Alarcon, and I am a systems analyst for the Data and Systems Group, also known as DSG within CMCS. A little bit about me, I graduated last year from the University of Maryland in Baltimore County, and I was an intern here at CMS for about a year and a half before converting to a permanent team member. Uh, so in DSG, we don't get to do much of the fun health policy stuff, but we do provide the agency a lot of oversight and guidance for all the information coming from the states for effective administration of the Medicaid and CHIP programs. And you bet it's a lot of data, but one of our biggest initiatives right now is to modernize the existing eligibility and enrollment systems by moving closer towards a cloud infrastructure while saving as much money as possible to reinvest into our beneficiaries. And the pandemic has done nothing but accelerate this process. So on average, the federal spending for the development and operations of these systems can top out at $5 billion a year. 
So cost analysis is another big objective. Um, so at, CM at CMCS, you can rest assured that you'll have all the training at your disposal to be as prepared as possible to excel in your work. There's a large collection of special training available for project management tools, such as Jira and Confluence, cloud infrastructure tools like AWS, cloud monitoring tools like New Relic, Splunk, and LaunchDarkly, and also a lot of software development tools like GitHub and VS Code. So before interning at CMS, I had interned in the private sector and at the United States House of Representatives, and CMS has been the one place where I have seen that there is a significant opportunity for growth, and I've been fortunate to be in a team where the directors and leadership are constantly making sure that we have the tools and resources to grow as engineers and leaders. And I think that what's really impressed me are how managers generally want to be a part of your career development. And from an information system standpoint, I believe that the skills and experience you're going to get here is almost priceless because you're going to carry it with you wherever you go, and you're going to be able to modernize other agencies or companies and help them save millions of dollars in cloud computing. So I think there's a lot of recent graduates on here, but um, I think the biggest advice I can give you is to just frequently look over the USA Jobs website because a lot of times postings will be there for a couple of days and then they'll be gone. So definitely check it um, a couple times a week. Um, and I know it takes like 30 minutes per posting, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so, you know, whether you're looking for an internship or you're a recent graduate like me, I'm confident that CMS is a great next step for your career. So I'll go ahead and stop there and pass it over to you, Megan. Thanks, Jose. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be with you today. My name is Meg Berry. My pronouns are she, her. I am the director of the Division of State Coverage Program in the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services. Um, the Division of State Coverage Programs is kind of a vague name, but what it means is that we, uh, my team oversees basically everything that's not, not Medicaid. Uh, we oversee the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP, the basic health program, which is called CHP, and the Connecting Kids to Coverage grant program. So something that I really like about uh, my job and the work that my team does is that we oversee the entirety of our program. Um, so most people within CMS, um, they have just an incredibly deep knowledge of a small part of Medicaid and Medicare. Let's, let's set aside our, our colleagues in CMMI for a minute. Um, they, they also, I think, go wide. Um, but my team is very wide. We oversee all of the CHIP and BHP programs. We have people who know about managed care, people who know about payment, uh, people who have expertise in benefits, things like uh, mental health parity and substance use disorder benefits. Um, we have a whole team that's working on extended postpartum coverage in CHIP. Um, and so, we have the opportunity to just work on a lot of different things and um, kind of exercise a lot of different muscles in terms of the things um, that we do during the day. No day is the same in our division. Um, in terms of thinking about hiring, I think one thing that I would say um, is a focus for me when I'm hiring is once you've gotten through kind of all the processes that everyone else has talked about, applying at USA Jobs, um, you know, getting contacted by a hiring manager, um, you know, preparing for the interview process, you know, I ask um, people a lot of questions that re require them to reflect on experiences that they've had in the past. So I think that's a way to prepare for an interview. The other thing that I'm very focused on when I'm hiring is people's writing ability. We do do a writing test. And um, I think that's one of the most important skills that you can bring um, to your career at CMS is just the ability to write well and, and communicate orally well. Um, in terms of my career, um, I have a law degree and a public health degree, and I started my career, uh, but, but I, I knew I wanted to work in policy. I knew I didn't want to really be a lawyer. So I started my career at uh, a policy organization in D.C. I worked on a lot of different kinds of health policy. I worked on Medicare um, and some other, other programs, but I knew that I really wanted to work in Medicaid. So whenever I talked to anybody, I, I talked about Medicaid and I talked about how much I wanted to work in Medicaid, um, mostly because I just find Medicaid to be like, like CHIP and BHP, um, a fa fascinating programs that really require partnership between the federal government and the states. And I find that interaction really fascinating. So I talked a lot about how I wanted to work in Medicaid. And finally, 
someone connected me with uh, someone they knew was hiring at CMS. Um, so I had some conversations with the, those people and, and then I, I did what many of the people here have talked about. I, I ended up applying for a job on USAJobs.gov uh, and I um, went through the hiring process that way. Um, I've been at CMS for almost 10 years. Um, I was hired as an analyst and I moved up to be a special assistant. And then I was a deputy division director in my current division and now I'm the division director. Um, so I think people have touched on how many opportunities there really are to grow once you're inside CMS. And, and, I, and I have definitely found that to be true. And I definitely help, um, I hope that, that my team finds that, that I'm really committed to helping them grow in that way too. So it's been a fun journey uh, being a CMS employee and, and hopefully some of you will find your way here too. And, uh, and we can help you grow in your careers too. So I guess I'll turn it back to Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meg and Jose. We really appreciate your perspective from CMCS as we transition to the end of our webinar. Um, I think there are definitely a few threads through a few gems here that we've heard is that, first of all, so many people on the call out of our seven speakers are truly CMS lifers, um, long term career professionals at, CMC, at CMS. Um, so um, there's a lot of really great opportunities for each of you on the line. We are actually at right at time for our webinar today. I want to thank all of our speakers that have joined us, all of the staff from the recruitment and outreach team and our HR SME that are on the line answering questions. I'm going to go ahead and launch our poll for today. Let us know how we did. Um, was the information covered valuable? And give us some more details on what you think about this webinar series and how we can make it uh, better. Um, also, all of our positions for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services can be found on usajobs.gov. Um, and so that's where you're going to find all of our positions that were mentioned today. And please do not forget to join us on June 1st for our next webinar where we're going to get back into that federal hiring process and talk about the ins and outs of the USA Jobs website and the process for federal hiring. So you're going to hear from the recruitment and outreach team on that um, on June 1st. We're here every first and third Wednesday at 1 p.m. So I see lots of poll results coming through. I'm going to reach out to my colleague, Marla. Marla, do we have any other questions on the line? Um, anything that needs to be answered for our panel? Are, yeah, we've had some great questions, but we are up to date. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So pretty efficient there. So um, so otherwise, this concludes our webinar for today. Stay tuned. Um, this, this webinar will be posted on YouTube in about a month. Um, and we'll see you next time for uh, the ins and outs of the USA Jobs process at our next webinar. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.